Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. So I'm not sniffing glue or anything, I'm just uh, wanting to demonstrate what's actually happening when we create a vacuum here on Earth, which uh, is really nothing to do with the vacuum of space. It's a completely different concept. Uh, open, the open vacuum of space, if there is any, is just a still place with what we would assume would be no disturbances, an equilibrium. And the uh, vacuums that we create here on Earth in glass tubes or big strong metal containers by apparently sucking the air out and replacing it with nothing is a way of comparing how things would work or fly about in space. Again, we've got Galileo and Newton. Galileo's work was all about friction. He was checking marbles and uh, on different surfaces and considering friction. And uh, of course, friction is considered a, a resisting force against the motion of something. So without friction, without air, the soupy kind of air that we were talking about that, would al that allows birds and planes to fly as well as helium and hot air balloons to rise and fall by changing their density. So you've got a choice how to travel through the medium. You can use force to uh, apparently repel or oppose gravity or you can use uh, a change in your volume and its relative density to rise and fall in the medium air of air, just like you can in the medium of water. You can add a little bit of force if you want. If you're a little fishy and you want to swim up to the surface, then you can quickly, you can use your tail and adjust your swim ladder at the same time. So just now when I collapsed this by sucking on it, what did I do? created a vacuum or just changed the equilibrium of air pressure. Didn't, the only thing that replaced the air inside here, well the air went into my lungs a little bit but then it was replaced by the air on the outside. So there's this constant maintenance of an equilibrium which is what the Earth does. And if we understand how disturbing the equal equilibrium and then allowing that to return to its natural state is a way we can have a flow of energy. We don't need to be hurtling around a sun and spinning to have all these energetic forces. The transference of energy from one medium to another, from a frequency to uh, an audio frequency to a visual frequency or a sensory frequency, these are all things that happen. We have a transference of energy from low pressure to high pressure, from hot to cold. And it is these disturbances in the equilibrium which keep everything energetic, which generate the energy and the flow, the yin-yang. The sun and the moon work together. The sun heats, the moon cools. The sun heats, the moon cools. And you have your flow. You have your flow of energy and air pressures and tides. They work in tandem to create the opposites and create flow without colliding, without smashing into each other and destroying each other, which is the dark path that science understands as the way to understand how something works. You take a beautifully made Swiss watch and you smash it on the floor and then you look at the pieces and you think, mm, how does this go together, I wonder? 
that's what contemporary science considers the way to do things. Let's smash it up, let's kill it, let's squish it, let's explode it into smithereens and see what happens. Then we'll find out how it works. No. <laughs> so the, you know, the very fact that the Earth has an equilibrium, everything is maintaining an equilibrium, whether it's the water at its density and the air at that density and whatever other gases at their density, all getting mixed up by changes in temperatures and air pressure brought about by the sun and the moon fluctuating, generating that flow. And there you have your energy that if we attempt to go with the flow, as it were, rather than burning and blowing things up, we can see how the natural resisting the equilibrium will always end up with the equilibrium returning to its equilibrium. And therefore, whether it's heat transference, wave transference, when there is a transference, you get energy. The earth is its own generator of free energy for us if we understand how to just get in sync with the rhythms of the earth. Just an idea You know how when you were a kid and you sloshed around in the bath and you created waves that would go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and once you had that momentum going, you didn't really need much effort to keep yourself going backwards and forwards and the waves slopping higher and higher um, until your mum or dad shouted and screamed up the stairs to stop. Well, what if you've got some weights at either end of the bath and they are maybe wood or something that floats, uh, it resists water and you have these things going up and down as they're pushed up and down by the waves in the water and you've got this perpetual movement just it just starts I, in my mind's eye these things feed, feed off each other these are going up and down the waves are sloshing backwards and forwards there's a, the, something in the water that's, that's giving that water the extra density that it needs to have that energy and voila to me, could just keep on going. <sighs> Imagine that as a power station. Am I going to rush out and patent the idea? No, that's the whole idea of not patenting things. Everything has to be open source. We all have to be thinking our individual thoughts and theories based on our experiences and bring them together as a collective one. to find a gazillion different ways of tapping into the energy and breaking free from the idea that there is a force pulling us down onto the earth which we must resist. No, it's just that everything attempts to maintain an equilibrium. It's just the way things are. That's the only way that we can have a physical existence. There has to be some physical world to exist in. How long ago it was created, how it was created and why, who knows? But it's clearly intelligent design where everything, everything on this planet has a symbiotic relationship that gives the entire planet, a con makes it a constant source of energy. And all we have to do is disturb the equilibrium in a harmonious way. And as the equilibrium, the, the mass of the earth re returns the equilibrium, then we have our flux.
our transference of energy through through movement, momentum. But you see, people ask why. Uh, in a vacuum, do things fall at the same rate? Assuming that that rate of descent is due to the Earth, the ball Earth, being a particular mass and size. Whereas, again, we are traveling through a medium. So when you have a container that you within which you create a vacuum and you drop things through the container that has air inside it that is much less dense, then everything will drop through it quicker. You're literally creating gravity with the suction. So, just to try and clarify, yes, if, if you want to create a vacuum within this cup and I seal it off and we get some kind of pump onto it and we fire up this pump and we do, 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 we pull and pull, 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 pull as much of the air out as we can. What have we done with inside that container? We haven't replaced it with anything. We haven't replaced it with nothing. It's still air the air that's around us, you've just put it under extreme pressure and made it, you've changed the equilibrium between here and the air outside. So there is a rush for that balance to be returned. There is a force created. You've already used a lot of force to pull the air out. You know, you've sucked, sucked, sucked okay, you've just draw on that air and create its suction. So that is a force in itself. So anything within this will fall even quicker because it's literally being pulled down by the force of the vacuum that you have created. Okay. And that's completely different to how the vacuum of space would be. Everything works because an imbalance in the equilibrium is constantly being created. And as the equilibrium returns, energy, energy transfer.